This snapshot looks kind of awesome. We have new game rules, new mob eggs, new sounds, and lots of smart changes. This is 22W44A for both 1.19.3 and 1.20, and I'll make it clear with some text on the screen what update we're talking about. And just before we get started, cheeky subscribe reminder, if you're not and you enjoy these videos, then consider it. Otherwise, let's crack on. Let's start with the Monster Spawner block, formerly just known as the Spawner block. Its name is now consistent with Bedrock and isn't purple anymore. And the tag here also tells you that it interacts with Spawn Eggs to set the mob type. When you place this down, it no longer has a pig inside of it. That used to be the default. It also no longer emits any particles when you place it down. And once you do click on it with a mob egg, it will then begin to do its thing. You're also now able to middle click this block, something that you couldn't actually do before. When you do that though, it doesn't carry over the MBT data, so if we control middle click it, we'll find that it keeps the MBT data. All in all, some simple but rather helpful changes I think. Related to the monster spawner, there are some new spawn eggs in this snapshot for the iron golem and the snow golem. So previously you had to place down the blocks, you know, snow and pumpkin or iron and pumpkins to bring these into the world. This just makes so much sense. And yes, you can use these with the monster cage. You can do that with these next two that I'm going to show you. However, you won't find these in the spawn eggs creative tab. That is because it is the wither spawn egg and the ender dragon spawn egg. You have to use give commands to get your hands on these, obviously because of their destructive potential. And this is probably the last thing that you want someone doing in your world. Just uh, changing the time tonight and inviting absolute chaos into this world. I mean, I couldn't not show you this chaos, right? <laughs> Look at that. It is interesting to see I'm not getting the same result with the Ender Dragon though. Not one has spawned yet. Oh, th there it goes. We, we've got one that's sort of bugged out and then we got another. It could just be where I place these blocks they're getting in the way of the Ender Dragon actually coming into the world because its hitbox is so absolutely ginormous. And there it is, my friends, a sight that no one ever wants to see in their survival Minecraft world. And along with these four new eggs, the polar bear egg color has been changed just so it's a bit more distinguished from the gas color. All right, once again, more changes to the creative inventory. And here on the website, you can see they're hoping this might be the last round of changes. Once again, there's been some general reordering inside of the consumables tab, the building blocks tab, and also the natural blocks tab. This includes the ore materials and their counterpart blocks. In the crafting tab, ancient debris was added. Building blocks has been given chain and block of amethyst. Redstone blocks now includes chest, barrel, cauldron, furnace, and composter. And in my opinion, a really good separation here in the functional blocks tab, this is where you'll now find the infested blocks along with the end portal frame. The respawn anchor was moved to be in front of bed since it shares a similar functionality. And also in this tab, you can now find the bee's nest and tinted glass. And for this last one, you will need to be OP. If you go into the redstone blocks and go to the very bottom, you'll now see there is the debug stick, the light barrier, structure void, jigsaw block, and all the command blocks. But if you're not OP, they're not going to appear, which I think is pretty smart. Next up, seven new game rules. A couple of these are really fantastic too. For example, we have global sound events. This is set to true by default. For example, if you summon a wither on a server or kill the ender dragon, it creates sounds that are heard across the server. And if you set this to false, then that's not going to happen. Next, we have a water source conversion, which by default is true. We're going to set it to false. When we come over here to this pool of water and remove a few blocks, put a water source over here, you'll see that it no longer creates four water sources. Equal to this, there's one for lava source conversion. Again, this is false by default, but we're going to set it to true. We come over here and just remove a few pieces of the lava, put this in here. I mean, this is practically cursed, what we're looking at. It's going to generate another block of lava. And I think these game rules are great because it just allows you to customize parts of the world and the game behavior more. And that's what this next one does, snow accumulation height. By default, this is going to be set to one. Then if you're a region where it snows and the weather is correct, these snow layers will form on the ground like you've probably seen plenty of times before. So if you set this to zero, no snow is gonna settle. So you can now have the option to stop snow from landing in your world. You can also set this number as high as eight. So from one to eight, you can have it so that the different snow layers can form a full block. And here in this world where it's been snowing, I decided to run a test. 
I set the game rule to 8 and now you can see that the snow, wherever it can settle, it's been here for long enough and all of these snow layers have created a full block. Interestingly, very importantly, it doesn't then create another one on top of it, which as you can imagine would cause some serious problems over time. We have three left and these are very similar to one another. Block Explosion Drop Decay is set to true by default, as is Mob Explosion Drop Decay. So these rules are for non-TNT explosions. Let's go ahead and get a creeper here to explode. And then we'll get a random amount of drops from what it's blown up, like different types of blocks and items. And you never actually get the full amount back. So if I now set that game rule to false, we shall see that every single item is dropped. When I come over here and pick up all of these blocks, you can see we get way more. And that's because each and every one of them drops something. Now that's how TNT actually works by default. This explosion will give us all of the items. That is, TNT Explosion Drop Decay is set to false by default. So if I go ahead and set it to true, this will work like the Creeper Explosion we saw first of all. So we're going to get far less items. And these are some really good game rules that let the players customise their world a little bit. Let's say you don't want Creepers to be quite as painful and they should drop everything they blow up. You can now do that. And all of these game rules are included in the Create New World screen if you go into the Edit Game Rules menu. Alright, there are also new sounds, and the first three are step sounds. One for walking on carpet, another for walking on lily pads, and for walking on the small amethyst bud. And I misunderstood this next bit, there are not four new sounds. You now simply hear stepping sounds when you walk through glow like in nether sprouts or either of the roots. Not related to sounds, but a bug I wanted to make you aware of while we're talking about 1.19.3. Turtles breeding cooldown have previously been bugged, so you could just breed them over and over again. And in this snapshot, that's finally been fixed. All right, 1.20 and the chiseled bookshelf. And Mojang have been listening to the community. There are no changes to its uh, odd redstone behavior yet, but now it's going to be compatible with hoppers. Let's go ahead, chuck in some books, and look at that right there. We can also then take the books out, right? And you might have noticed it blinking a little bit. It doesn't seem to do it that way around, but if we let it fill up and then put the hopper underneath, this one right here kind of blinks a lot. You can also fill this up from the side too. So it's the top and the side to put books in and a hopper underneath to take them out. And this works with all the different types of books, of course. Now you might be thinking this is a great item filter for books, but I've been thinking it over and what stops a non-book type item from going into this hopper, right? I mean, I guess you can, you can check if the item that came into the hopper was a book because it would then disappear. I'm sure the redstone geniuses are going to come up with cool uses for this. But uh, here is my own little idea that doesn't quite work. I mean, it's kind of like having an animated bookshelf, I guess. Yeah, I haven't got time to study this right now, but there's probably a way to make it go empty, then fill all the way up and then empty out again. That is my redstone challenge for you, my friends. Along with this, the bamboo mosaic can now be used as fuel. That was probably just a short oversight. And when it comes to camels, they can of course go straight over a one and a half tall block. They should now be able to pathfind over these two. Yep, look at that, straight over it it goes. However, it doesn't work in this scenario, right? Like this is one and a half blocks tall, but it takes up two blocks. And yet if I give this thing a saddle, it can go sort of in and out. So maybe that's another fix we might see in the future. And a little bug fix for them, it was noticed that the slow falling potion effect would cause their leg animation for movement to slow down. This apparently affected frogs too. Now when these snapshots come out, Minecraft Beta and Preview Edition drops later the same day. And last week there were some changes to the camel here. But I have some issues with my system where I'm just not able to update the game properly, so I couldn't get my hands on that beta. But it turned out these changes were actually just for parity and things that I hadn't noticed. Like if you use a speed 2 potion on the camel and then do a dash, you go even further. And if the camel takes some damage at one point or another, it will actually passively reheal its health over time. It is really, really slow though. It takes a couple of minutes. As you can see, the speed potion has actually worn off. And as of recording this video, the latest beta and preview hasn't dropped. So if there's anything important, I'll be covering it in next week's video. 
And this, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. And so if you're looking for something else to watch, please do go and check out my Minecraft Discussions playlist. It is full of new and interesting types of video that I've recently been making. So go check it out and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you, and I will see you next week, hopefully, with another one.